New findings from a recent scientific experiment in the United States could impact our understanding about the laws of physics. The results from a laboratory in Illinois suggest that there's new evidence from the behavior of an atomic particle that points to several undiscovered forces in the universe that may have played a critical part in its creation and expansion. And to talk more about this and those insights is author of a new book, Cosmic Queries, Star Talk's Guide to Who We Are, How We Got Here, and Where We're Going, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's also an astrophysicist and the Frederick P. Rose Director of the Hayden Planetarium. What the heck is a muon and what happened to this muon during the, the G-2 experiment? I think many people live their whole lives not even knowing that such a thing as a muon exists <laughs> in this world. <laughs> uh, so they're the yeah. familiar particles, uh, like the, the electron, proton, neutron, we learn about those in school. But um, there's a whole other layer, I might call it layer, stratum of particles that exists at higher energies that are counterparts to those familiar particles in our everyday life. And the electrons version of itself at higher energies is called a muon. There's actually a third tier mm. as well for even higher energies than that. And we access those in particle accelerators. So a muon is basically a heavy electron manifesting under very high energy conditions. Okay, I actually think I understand that. Um, so we know about <laughs> fundamental forces in physics like uh, gravity, elect electromagnetism, uh, as well as strong and weak nuclear phenomena. Some researchers believe that this discovery could actually lead to a fifth force. How would that yeah. change yeah. science? Yeah, so I think the, some newspaper articles say it will upend physics. That misrepresents what's going on a little bit. It, if, what the mm. if the discovery holds up under further scrutiny and further testing, it will add to our mm. understanding of physics. So here's what happens. The, these particles, like this muon, like I said, it's like a heavy electron. It has a charge, a negative charge. It also has something called a spin. Uh, uh, some, think of it like a spin, but it's a quantum phenomenon. But think of it like a spin. If you mm -hmm. send it through a magnetic field, it'll sort of process in the presence of that field. All right, we know exactly how that puppy should be processing. You send it through, and if it processes differently, then something else is going on that is not understood. Right. And so that's why we're thinking, is there another particle? Is there another field, another force? And so we're in the middle of trying to figure that out right now. And it may be that we just have to add another force to our collection of forces in this universe. So as I was sort of reading up on this, I was kind of surprised to see that on the very same day that the results of this experiment were revealed and got all these splashy headlines, there was also another report put out by other physicists who said, oh, we really don't think that this is discovering anything new at all. In fact, we think it's incorrect. So yeah. that doesn't, that doesn't, those headlines aren't that sexy, like, you know, <laughs> another sort of force of nature being discovered. So they didn't quite make the cut, I don't think. Um, they were like so, buried in the articles, but clearly not everyone is as you know stunned by this as others. And so I guess I got to ask you, just how relevant is it? I know we in the media love to make big deals out of this sort of thing, but in the science world, you know, what's the conversation? Yeah. So so you have to be very careful because if no one has discovered something before, and you're the only one who's got the data for it. Then people, and you want to say there's a whole new force in the universe or a whole new thing or a phenomenon, we are all justifiably skeptical because chances are you did something wrong in the experiment. That's true 95 <laughs> out of 100 times, okay? But five wow. of those times, maybe you got it. And what adds extra insight to this is at Brookhaven Labs, out here on Long Island, I'm in New York City, the... The, uh, they had a hint of this phenomenon 20 years ago, but, but it was never verified Ooh. and you needed more powerful accelerators to investigate and to repeat the experiment. So there was already a hint that maybe ups the probability that it's a real phenomenon, but it's always good to be skeptical because most of the time it's not. 
Uh, okay, so I want to, before we let you go, I got to ask you about something else. Uh, a science that may be a little more accessible because we can actually see this with the naked eye. NASA just successfully flew the Ingenuity helicopter. We think it's successful. I don't know how long it takes for them to confirm that they did it. But anyways, to fly it on Mars, making it the first powered and controlled aircraft to fly on another planet. Um, I don't, uh, presuming that it was a success, because I think it takes a while before they get confirmation here on Earth, but how will this breakthrough help with the search for life on Mars, say? Well, it's a great question. So first of all, it was successful, and they confirmed that like okay. an hour ago, okay? <laughs> so that the, the test was um, <laughs> you, you, you start up the rotors, have it ascend, hover, sort of rotate, and then come back down again, you know, just sort of going through its motions, and so it's an engineering test, all right? It's not clad with 100 instruments. It has just cameras on it. It's just to see, is this possible at all in the rarefied atmosphere of Mars? Less than 1% the thickness of our air. So the rotors have to be really light, really thick, and rotate fast to get the mm -hmm. lift necessary. So the way it'll help is the rover is not very fast moving, and suppose there's a cliff and the, or, or a crater rim, and you wanna go up and down into the crater. The rover is not gonna do that, lest you risk damaging the rover, but a, a copter can go up and down and in and look around and come back out, and it, it's just the kind of thing you need to extend what your rover was doing, and it, Personally, I think it's a badass addition to our exploration of Mars. <laughs> Official scientific term. Neil, thank you very yes. much. <laughs> <laughs>